So let's build a bow tie diagram. Um, let's visit a brand new visitor attraction that has just opened called Dinosaur Park. And please note, this is no way being inspired by the Jurassic Park books or films. So the new attraction is a T-Rex. And hopefully you can see this image uh, OK. And it's been open for a few weeks and it's hugely popular amongst most of the, the visitors, certainly. So the park management have asked us to prepare our risk assessment. And you might be having a look around right now and um, you can maybe see some hazards. You might even see some barriers. You know, we've got a perimeter wall, park entrance gate. We've got a command centre watching over the park. In the bottom corner, you might not be able to read them, but there's lots of manuals, training records, insurances. We've got a park full of visitors. In the top left, it looks like we've got an emergency response team ready to go and plenty of emergency exits. But also there's a few suspicious characters uh, lurking outside. So for those uh, on the call who are familiar with risk management, um, perhaps you're already thinking of some hazards and some uh, consequences, and some barriers. You know, so our hazard, of course, is our angry T-Rex, you know, that could get out of the cage. And of course, that could result in the you know, injury or death of the visitors to the park or indeed the park's staff. And indeed, that might damage the park's reputation. I don't know about you, but I certainly wouldn't want to visit uh, um, Dinosaur Park if there was dinos on the loose. But of course, there's lots and lots of things in place in this picture that can prevent those incidents from happening or indeed minimise the consequences if they do. You know, the T-Rex is in a pretty um, uh, strong looking cage. We've got procedures. Let's have a wee look. So we've got our park staff that are, of course, trained, you know, to lock the cage. We've got a pretty robust looking cage there. Right in the bottom, we've got, a, you might not be able to read them, but we've got a, a cage locking procedure. Um, we've got, you know, park ranger training and competence records as well. That's a pretty big lock on the cage as well. Um, there's a park alarm that can be pressed, a big red button. We've got emergency exits. Uh, we've got, as I've said, we've got our uh, park emergency response team who are good to go. And indeed, for some of the lesser consequences about park reputation, we've got a park media representative there. And finally, we've got our park insurance certificate. So if you were to take all that and risk assess it, you might end up with something that looks a lot like this. What we see here is, the, is our typ typical risk assessment in tabular form. We've got our hazard, our causes, consequences and our barriers there. And what we see here is a long list of safeguards. And quite often in a risk assessment, and I've made this mistake myself, is we see a long list of safeguards and then make the assumption that that's enough and that we're OK to move on to the next hazard. But as I've said before, major accidents are usually the result of multiple failures. Um, and this can be very difficult to visualise in a risk assessment in tabular form. And when you look at a risk assessment in tabular form, there's often a focus on the causes and consequences. And then, as I say, that simple listing of barriers. And this is where bow tie diagrams come in. They can be used to provide a clear graphical output of a risk assessment in a format that can be understood by everyone, personnel at all levels in an organisation. And it allows us to focus on the barriers. So let's look at the same scenario again, but through the lens of bow tie diagrams. So we'll start by introducing some of the elements that make up our bow tie diagram. The first is the hazard, and the hazard is something, be it an activity, an operation or a material that has the potential to cause harm. When we describe hazards, we should include enough context to describe a hazard in its controlled state or situation and its size. So here, our hazard is an angry T-Rex locked in a cage. And describing it in this way gives us enough information to assess our risk. Simply saying dinosaur or animal, that would be too generic. It doesn't tell us what it's doing or where it is. So a term that might be new to everyone is the top event. The top event is the point at which control of the hazard is lost. It's now realised its potential to cause harm, but it's not caused any physical harm yet. And it should describe what control is lost. So again, here, the T-Rex escapes from the cage. And this is one of the crucial points of the exercise of building a bow tie diagram to get right. The top event shouldn't be a consequence and it shouldn't be too narrow such that it's, it's only got one consequence or indeed too wide bearing that there are dozens upon dozens of consequence. 
but it's in, but it, and 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 it's possible for the same hazard to have multiple top events. And quite often in a bow tie workshop, you might revisit this point and tweak the top event, um, and that's something that's uh, uh, that's very common. So should our, ang our angry T-Rex escape, what would the consequences be? Well, the consequences, of course, are the harm or the damage that could result from the top event. And it's common, of course, for a top event to have many consequences. Normally, we only focus on the major consequences, but lesser may be selected. Each organisation may well have some, go some governance around the type of consequences that go into bow ties. And much like the hazard and the top event, it's important to provide context. Injury, damage, leak, these don't cut it for me. These don't provide enough context. And indeed, the converse is true. We can be far too specific and end up splitting the same consequence into two or three. For example, if you're eaten on or stepped on by a T-Rex, does it really make a difference? So of course, yeah, let's just choose two consequences. The T-Rex stands or eats on um, eats people and the event damages the park reputation. But indeed, if we were building the full bow tie for this, we might decide to break the consequences up to park guests or park personnel, as an example, as they may well have different barriers. So we've covered our, our um, top event, the point at which control of the hazard is lost, and we've looked at some of the consequences. So the next element that we bring in is threats. These are the, all the potential reasons why we might lose control of the hazard, reasons why the top event might occur. Identifying all potential threats is a hugely important step. And this is normally carried out as a brainstorming exercise or might even be taken before the bow tie uh, workshop from a hazard, for example. And again, much like the consequences, it's incredibly important to give sufficient context. Via the descriptions in the bow tie, anyone reading should be able to understand how a threat could lead to the top event and then lead to a consequence. Threats can be the cause of a failure, they can be an external influence, they could be operational issues, anything that can credibly cause the top event to happen. So let's have a look at the threats that I've chosen here. Of course, there's the cage might be left open in, in error. The cage might not be strong enough or indeed the cage being deliberately opened by some of those suspicious characters. And you'll see here that the top and the bottom threat both result in the cage door being open, but the reason for that cage door being open are very different and may well have different barriers, as we might see. So here we have our instant, um, sorry, our uh, risk assessment, sorry, shown in the traditional bow tie format. The threats on the left may trigger the top event and the consequences on the right are the undesirable outcomes of the top event. This is a bow tie diagram in its simplest form. Any threat might trigger the top event, which may then result in any one or more of the consequences. This journey is called the main pathway. So we can now extract the real value from bow tie diagrams. We can analyse the risk and we can insert barriers along each pathway. Let's head back to Dino Park and think again about the barriers. And hopefully you can see some of them here and we described some of them earlier. So instead of listing, listing them, sorry, in a table, let's insert them along uh, in, in, the, in the right place on the main pathway. 